We're here this afternoon in the Riverview Wine Bar talking to Zach Harris and Pete Hennig of the uh, Atlantis, Quart Atlantis Quartet and they have a new album coming out this weekend, um, December 18th and 19th, right? That's right, yeah. And tell us a little bit about the uh, party you're going to have at the Artist Quarter. Uh, well, we're, we're having the release over the, the course of two days, uh, 18th and 19th, and we're going to start at 9 o'clock. And it's also a Toys for Tots drive, so if you bring a toy in, you, get, uh, you can get a CD for a discounted price. I guess that's our deal. Yeah. Yeah. Who else is in the band? Well, uh, there's Zach and I, of course, and then we have Brandon Wozniak on saxophone and Chris Bates on bass. So that rounds out the quartet. That's right. You've been playing together for a while, especially the three of you uh, without Chris. That's Chris. Chris is the newest member. That's right. right. Do you feel developed a lot of synergy and so forth between you guys? Definitely. I, th I, I think that's something that um, is kind of refreshing for us just to, to work with just someone with a different perspective. And um, yeah, he fits right in. We've just been kind of, it feels like, it feels like a band. Um, yeah, it was a great fit when Chris stepped in. Uh, you know, we had been playing as a group for about a year and a half yeah. before that, and uh, parted ways with our old basses. He just got busy doing other stuff, and, um, and so we called Chris, and right away it brought a just a different kind of dimension to the, to the group, and uh, a little bit more trust between all of us, and the ability to kind of go different places. Um, on the album, it's called uh, it's, it, Animal Progression. Animal, animal Progress. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Animal Progress. Uh, we hear some songs that I think could honestly be called fusion songs. It's the first one. Um, do you disagree with that? No, I, you know, I, I, the word fusion is kind of scary. I think everyone okay. gets af afraid when they hear that word. But I, I don't disagree necessarily because I... I think overall, I mean, all of our styles and backgrounds are a little bit different, and yeah. we're coming together and trying to fuse them, so... Yeah. I think fusion has taken on a different thing than it did in the 70s, you know? Yeah. When, when you hear the word fusion, you kind of think, like, it's close mic to drums and uh, synthesizers and, mm. you know... Hawaiian shirts and <laughs> Yeah. So. And I think uh, the modern fusion is more organic blend of different styles of music with yeah. jazz and harmony and, and ideas. So. Well, I was thinking in, in particular, I don't want to get, go on to this point too much, is that I think there's only a couple songs that we called that. I mean, the first song, Verge, for instance, it, I had trouble telling if uh, Chris was using an electric or an acoustic bass. Oh, okay. And it was, uh, I mean, you, I think you could have called it instrumental rock, even, if you really pressed the envelope. Yeah. I think so. I mean, and I think that's kind of the, uh, the the mo of the group is just to try to um, play music that isn't quote unquote jazz. You know, with jazz instrumentation, and still kind of explore um, those songs kind of as a jazz musician would. You know, you don't have to play it exactly the same every night, even if it has a, a rock feel or. Um, disco feel or something, you can still explore through it and, and, and make it new every night. That's kind of our goal, I think. And I think that's kind of what defines jazz in this day and age a little bit, as opposed yeah. to other things, because so much new music has these influences from other genres, but it's the approach to playing it, I think, that really makes it jazz. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about where you came from? Uh, why don't we start with Zach first? Just Tell us where you grew up, uh, maybe your educational background. Uh, as a kid, I lived in California, Virginia, and ended up in Illinois. Uh, went to college there, uh, studied music, um, went on the road with a new grass band for a few years, actually, and then went back and finished my degree. All the while, I was playing a lot of jazz down there. I was very fortunate to get the opportunity to, to perform a lot. Um, for a small town, it has vibrant music culture, and uh, there, were, there were a lot of gigs. Who's your name in the town? Uh, Carbondale, Illinois. 
Okay, good. And why did you end up here in the Twin Cities? Uh, well, I met a gal. She has some family up here. Isn't that why everybody moves right, right. to the Twin Cities? <laughs> and she's now my lovely wife, and uh, and it was a great move. Um, we wanted to move to a city so that we could both pursue our thing. She does theater, this kind of stuff, and of course do music, and because of her family connections, and just we like this city a lot, or these cities, I guess I should say. <laughs> and uh, it was a great move. We've been, I've been here about four years now, and it's been really positive. Um, I guess I didn't, I didn't grow up too far away from here. I uh, grew up in Appleton, Wisconsin, and uh, didn't really do any moving around, and I had a few great teachers there. And found out that I really liked, liked drums at, at a young age, and uh, yeah, and then I, I just, um, after I got out of high school, the search was on for a music school somewhere, and uh, McNally Smith seemed to be the, the logical choice for me, and um, I was planning on going to Berkeley after that, but I just started playing a lot here, and met several people, and made a lot of connections, and, and here I am, ten years later. Now I'd like to uh, move into the specifics of the album. Um, is there a, a way that you think this album differs in conception from your first? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, first of all, just having Chris there is a big difference just because, you know, he's he's been playing for a while and he has a lot of experience and a lot of input. So whenever we bring something to the table, you know, he's always got his twist on it and most of the time it ends up being something of, like compositionally different than we planned on. So a lot of the songs I think have a different spin on them. Um, also, I think that um, the songs now are a, a lot more through composed than before. Uh, each song kind of has, in my, in my opinion, has its own environment for it. So there, there are, um, I, I don't want to get too specific, but in, in certain songs we might improvise and it's, it's completely open for us to, to play whatever we want. And other songs are just certain places or things we, we don't do with, with, the, with those tunes. Yeah, to add to that, I think on this album, like we spent a lot more time working on the arrangement of the tunes. So whereas the first album has several tunes that are over 10 minutes long. <laughs> and, you know, and I really like the first album. I think it was a great record for us to start out with. But we definitely focused a lot more on just kind of open and letting it go and improvising a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of improvisation on this new record, but there's 12 tunes, and so we wanted to focus on keeping them a little shorter, more like six minute tunes, and uh, and making it so that the album, especially with 12 songs, really flows and doesn't kind of have that dead weight sometimes. 